Did the NSA get hacked? Pokemon Go users fall prey to malware, and a TCP vulnerability is found on many Android devices. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morrison. This is ThreatWire for August 23rd, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all of these shows before anyone else, and check out our Patreon to see how you can help the show grow. That's over at patreon.com slash threatwire. On to the news. First off, of course, the NSA. On Monday of last week, a hacking group called Shadow Brokers created an auction for cyber weapons made by the NSA, or at least that's what they claimed. The group said they had stolen several programs used for cyber espionage from the NSA hacking group called the Equation Group. Shadow Brokers released a public file showing many documents from the NSA programs, as well as an encrypted file that could be auctioned off once they hit 1 million Bitcoin. After a few days of controversy on whether or not the auction was for real NSA programs, evidence showed up claiming that it was indeed real. An agency manual instructing NSA ops to track program use with a string of characters, which also appears in the code Shadow Brokers released. The code seems to be tied to a program called Second Date, which is said to infect millions of devices worldwide with malware, which allows communications to be sent back to NSA servers. Kaspersky Labs also delved into the publicly released data and found strong connections between the programs they had already found and what Shadow Brokers was releasing. To further prove the theory that the data is actually real, Cisco announced that one of the files from Shadow Brokers hack was actually a zero-day product flaw in a Cisco product that had gone undiscovered for years, worrying many because that would mean the NSA was holding on to zero days without disclosing them to manufacturers so companies like Cisco could actually secure their products. So how did they hack the NSA, if it is indeed true? Well, no one knows for certain, unfortunately, but some suspect that Shadow Brokers hacked an NSA staging server. We also do not know who the Shadow Brokers group is, other than a little bit odd. It's odd because a normal hack of this size would usually be sold for thousands or millions of dollars, not auctioned off necessarily. Edward Snowden believed them to be involved with or in response to the hacks of the DNC or the Democratic National Convention and similar recent breaches to democratic data, and suggested that it could be a warning from Russian hackers to U.S. officials. Snowden suspects, again, Russian involvement, but this has not been proven. What we do know now is that more and more data is coming to light, showing that this seems legit. And as more information is reported, we will share it on ThreatWire as well as on our social networking feeds. I would probably be playing Pokemon Go right now if it weren't for the fact that there are no Pokestops where I work. It's highly unfortunate, and I would definitely be catching me some Pokemon right now if it weren't for that case. But if you are playing Pokemon Go right now, do not be fooled by an SMS message offering up thousands of Pokecoins for clicks on links. This should be a no-duh, but apparently it's not. Over the past several weeks, attackers have been sending malicious SMS messages to mobile device owners in North America, offering them just this. Pokecoins! The site links usually ask the device owner to share the link with their friends to get the Pokecoins, which ends up with more spamming. Some sites ask for Pokemon Go login credentials to deposit your coins, which means that you would be giving up, guess what, your Google account information. Attackers are also using ransomware written fake Pokemon Go apps for laptops and PCs to encrypt files until you pay to get them decrypted. So to all the Pokemon Go players and to consumers in general, be extremely skeptical of any links in SMS or any apps that pretend to be your favorite game. A major vulnerability was disclosed just last week that affects 8 out of 10 Android devices, allowing an attacker to cancel a connection or attack traffic between two hosts over TCP, or also known as the Transmission Control Protocol. Apparently, this flaw has existed since 2012 on Linux systems due to the way TCP is implemented on those machines. The entire research on this vulnerability was disclosed in a paper by the University of California, Riverside, and U.S. Army Research Research Laboratory. It's called Off-Path TCP Exploit, Global Rate Limit Considered Dangerous. So a patch for the TCP problem has already been pushed to the Linux kernel, but of course, over-the-air security patches for mobile devices tend to take a little bit of time 
to be distributed through their carriers. This attack over TCP would require a thief to identify both ends of the transmission. So they would have to know a point A and a point B, and it takes advantage of the regular global rate limit time for TCP packets to be acknowledged and then responded to by a host. Until the patch makes its way to your device, you can use a VPN for communications to better protect your said device. Thanks again to all the fine people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. I think you know who you are. You are the reason that we can keep bringing you news every single week. Any little bit helps us to grow the show, and in return, this is the really cool and fun part, we are going to build an RSS for you, and when we reach our next goal, we will bring on another episode every single week. We might even feature your adorable fur babies, like this new one, super cute puppy. I think they're four months old. Four months old, so cute, in an upcoming episode. So send us your fur babies. I think they're adorable. Check out the perk levels on Patreon and thanks again for helping us keep this coming completely independent and ad free. Of course, if you cannot donate, you can hit the subscribe button or you can share this episode on your favorite social media page. Use the hashtag threatwire so that we can see it. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you on the internet.